why would someone destroy their lives to continue to use drugs? Why would they sacrifice everything? As I said earlier, I think, uh, the drugs are working on the natural reward system that normally reinforces uh, normally beneficial behaviors, finding food, finding water, uh, doing well at work, uh, social interaction. But the drugs are much more powerful. They're working thousands of times in some cases more intensely on these brain reward systems than what natural rewards are doing. So that in itself makes them much more preferable in some ways to natural rewards. But then when you have the process of addiction on top of that, where you have brain changes that change your whole brain chemistry, and that affects your thought processes so, so that every minute of every day is spent thinking about using more drug, it's hard for people to understand. It's not a logical choice. It's not a conscious choice of, oh, well, I'll just throw away my life and use drugs. It's an uncontrollable choice. They don't have that kind of control. They know that it's ruining their lives, but they can't control it. That's one of the defining aspects of addiction. You can talk to alcoholics and addicts who will tell you, I wish I never became an alcoholic or an addict. It's destroyed my life. But they will still say that all they want to do is use their drug. That's that aspect of addiction that really commandeers your brain reward system. It's sort of like the drugs have taken over uh, you and your choices or your decisions where it's the, the drugs are sort of driving their own ongoing use and you're in less control of um, uh, the consequences and the, the actions and the behaviors. And, and that takes uh, specific kinds of treatment to get, regain control over such a compelling, addictive process. People don't stop using even though um, they see the, they know the harm that it may be causing them and um, they may realize that it's a problem in their life because that's what addiction is. It's become, um, it's become a crutch on how, and, a, and a way for them to handle their life. Um, and a lot of times kids don't see, especially adolescents, they all think they're invincible. It's not going to happen to them. I think even adults have some of that, but <laughs> it's part of the nature of being an adolescent is to believe that you're invincible against the world. So they don't think it's going to happen to them. And they don't, because consequences come slowly, they don't, they don't really see it as a problem. I guess in ways I kind of tried to stop, but I kind of didn't. Um, like I said before, I would tell myself that if I started, if my nose started bleeding, I would stop. If I became homeless, I'd stop, you know? Um, I remember waiting to get my fix for, say, like a few hours, waiting to get that fix. And I'd go into the bathroom and crush it up and I'd take my line. And I would think to myself the whole time, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. And then I'd get the, I'd take it and I'd, have like a wet rush of euphoria and I would be like no I'm not I just really needed this um I did the whole I'm only gonna do it on Saturdays I'll only do it at night I'll only do it this time I'll only do it that time um I'll only do this much I'll only instead of drinking beer I'll drink hard liquor instead of drinking hard liquor I'll drink wine I mean every every typical thing I think that an alcoholic and an addict goes through um, and tells himself it's every it's every excuse and every way to manipulate what you know is already true to be. It's just that you aren't ready to stop yet. Your body's your body's done. Your mind is so into it that you can't. You're so far gone. Like deep down in my heart of hearts, I knew that I needed to stop and I knew that I wanted to, but my mind was so, I, it wasn't even my mind anymore. It was my disease. I, I do believe that this is a disease. I believe that it's a disease of perception and it's a disease of the mind. And my perception was so skewed and so not normal, whatever normal may be, but it just wasn't that like that, you know, it, it wasn't gonna tell me that I needed to stop. It told me that I needed more and that I couldn't function without it.
and that no one was gonna like me without drugs or alcohol, and that no one was gonna be my friend, and that really I wasn't gonna make anything out of myself unless I had these things in my life. And so it was just this whole, it was just this whole sense of false control, I guess.